choose to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt ring. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV. We're in Wroclaw, Poland. Sorry. Gareth, he didn't interrupt your no, I interview. Didn't I didn't do it. I walked away. I walked away. You put your hand out and I walked away. He wants to be the centre of attention. Sorry. <coughs> you know what's what's, it? what's that? Oh, go on, interview him. Yeah. This is Gareth A. Davis for IFL TV, interviewing Spencer, the Omen, Oliver. I'll hand you over to Umar Ahmed. No, you can interview him, ask a question. Spencer, why have you got action man, real live hair? No comment. Why do you look like a commando? No comment. How much do you like Simon Jordan? I love Simon. No comment. Do you love your wife? Of course I love my wife. Okay, there you go, carry on. It's gone, it's gone weird. What was that, police interview? Yeah, it's a bit weird. <laughs> It's gone weird. Let's start again. Right, let's just go back to boxing. Let's start. Let's go from the beginning, shall we? That's all right. We'll just roll rolling. That was a bit weird, that. That was a bit weird. Yeah. But Gareth, whatever. <laughs> go on, then. Right, you're in a different seat to normal, aren't you? Like... Yeah, what is this? It's like a throne, isn't it? It's like a throne. It's like James Bond <laughs> what, Do you not deserve a throne, Spencer? I don't think I do, mate. You've been here since, what, Tuesday, yesterday? Yeah, yeah. We got here... Um, Spoke to Don Charles yesterday. Um, they are really upbeat about this fight. They're really sort of, um, they're relishing the opportunity, if I'm totally honest. Don's um, realistic. He knows what he has to do. He knows the task in front of him. Um, and they said they've got a game plan and they think they're going to shock the world. You know, I think it is a huge opportunity for Daniel Dubois, but we've got to recognise that it is an opportunity, you know, and that's, you know, he's a huge underdog going into this one. We all know that. Alexander Usyk is not maybe just the best heavyweight out there right now, but he could be one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world right now. So it's all about whether Daniel Dubois can close the gap. I think we, you know, we saw the blueprint on how to beat Alexander Usyk. I think Derek Chisora showed that in the early part of his fight, and we saw in the ninth round of the second fight with Alexander Usyk, the way Anthony Joshua took the fight to Usyk, that Usyk's not comfortable when he's pressured like that. And I think that Daniel has to do that. It's got to be educated pressure. Um... And that's the way he's got to treat this fight. He's not got to treat this as a 12-round fight because if Usyk gets into any rhythm, we know what his boxing IQ is like, and he's very difficult to beat when he gets into a rhythm. So, um, yeah, from, from Daniel Dubois' point of view, he needs to take the fight to him early. He needs to stamp his authority. He needs to let his hands go. We know that he's got the punch power. You know, if you look back in, you know, heavyweight history and fights that are, you know, them huge upsets, you know, Daniel Dubois has got the capability of causing another huge upset. You know, you would never have thought that Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson back in Tokyo 1990, Buster Douglas would have had any chance. You know, Lennox Lewis when he lost to Oliver McCall, Lennox Lewis when he lost to Hussein Rackman. That's where you would put this fight, as in upsets, if Daniel pulls it off. But Klitschko look, Fury? Yeah, Klitschko Fury's up there as well. No one expected that as well. You know, so, look, heavyweight history is plagued with upsets. And Daniel Dubois will be hoping he can get that on Saturday night. You know, it's going to be tough for him here. You know, where we are in Poland, there's, there's a huge, um, huge amount of Ukrainians in this area. 250,000 Ukrainians actually in this area. And there's 43,000 going on Saturday night. Um, it's going to be a real hostile atmosphere for him in there as well, Daniel. He's got to deal with all that sort of stuff. But, you know, they recognise what they're going into. They know they're going into the Lions then. Um, yeah, it's just a huge, huge opportunity. Fair play for Daniel for stepping up to the plate and taking this. And it's going to be a great night. Spencer, did you see uh, Alexander Usyk's comments to Queensbury's channel with Dev Sarni saying that um, in that Chisora fight, he essentially yeah. took it easy to lure Anthony Joshua in? Yeah, and I, I, I saw you... You can relate to that, if I'm totally honest. You know, when you look at the performance, or was it the fact that he was just growing into a heavyweight? You know, it was only, what was it, his second fight as a heavyweight, I believe. Yeah. Second or third fight as a heavyweight. He was still very much at the beginning stages of, of growing into a heavyweight. The, Do you believe the development him? stages. Would a fighter Do, really take no, it No, I don't, I don't believe him, if I'm totally honest. I think he was probably shocked at Derek's strength. 
and Derek had showed him no respect and went in there and took the fight to him. But like Usyk does, and what he does so well is he works it out. He adapted. He's got that adaptability, and that is an, imp an, an important um, thing to have as a boxer. And he's got that, you know. So Daniel's got to be prepared to adapt as well. You know, when we saw Daniel boxing Joe Joyce. He didn't have that adaptability. Joyce come with a game plan and Daniel couldn't sort of work out, you know, how to sort of adapt. Hopefully he's learned from their mistakes. Don said he's been looking great in training, been out there in Spain in a high altitude training. I know the sparring he's had and it's been unbelievable. And he's also Don, he's got a secret weapon in camp as well. Absolutely, a secret weapon in camp. Don't worry. Oh, um, I think I know what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, and, and it will it will all come out. It will all come out in the next couple of days, I'm sure. So, yeah, they they they're coming here and they think they're getting victory, mate. Um, you can't say it now, though, can you? I no, think I, I know what mate. you mean. I, I can't, mate. I'm not going to. Wait, wait, you know, it'll, yeah, it will all yeah it will yeah. all come out. It will all come out. Yeah. But um, yeah, they they've taken this very very seriously. Like I say, with sparring partners, game plans, etc. Don Don. Charles is a great trainer, great with heavyweights. And um, yeah, when I saw them yesterday, they were, they were, they looked very comfortable in the surroundings, to say that. Mm. And he's almost like a father figure to fighters. And I think that's exactly what Daniel needs. Yeah. Talking about Don Charles. Absolutely. You know, Dan, Daniel needs that. You know, he needs that confidence installed in him. I don't know if you've seen the, the recent interviews he's been doing. He's coming out of his show really a lot, well. you know, and I yeah, think yeah. that Don Charles has been working on that side of it, you know, the psychological side, because Daniel, we know, as the physical attributes, you know, we know that he's got that. Um, and, you know, Don's been working on the mental side of things as well. It's very, very important. Mm. Do you think also perhaps his naivety in this, where Anthony Joshua didn't have that, obviously, um, great pedigree in terms of world championships, Olympic Games, mm -hmm. uh, world champion uh, as a professional. Overthought that fight over them 24 yeah. rounds. Clearly, Daniel is probably not going to do that on Saturday. Well, yeah, let's I hope think, he doesn't. I think that there was points in that fight with um, Anthony Joshua where he showed Alexander too much respect, give him too much space, space and allowed Alexander to dictate the pace and, and control the space. And I think that Daniel can't afford to do that. You know, he's got to be prepared to get knocked out or knock him out. It's one of those situations, you know, he's got to go in there and he's got, to, he's got to fight with a bit of fire in his belly. That is important and it's easier said than done with someone like Alexander Usyk, but that's what he's got to do. He's got to be educated in what he does. He's got to think about what he's doing, but ultimately he's got to stamp his authority early and he's got to use, you know, his size, his power and go in there and take it to him. People might call you deluded for this, but can you actually imagine Daniel nailing Alexander Usyk with a shot and getting well, him out of there? Do you know what? If you think about it, like you think of Daniel Dubois' power, he's very heavy-handed. He's physically very, he's a big specimen. He's a physically very heavy-handed guy, you know. And you look at Alexander Usyk, you go, well, can he take those sort of shots if Daniel goes in there and lets those hands go? Because we didn't really see that from Joshua. The only time we saw it from Joshua, actually, was in round nine. And Usyk looked uncomfortable. But Joshua blew a gasket in doing that. And, you know, Daniel, I mean, it's going to be a case of, can he do that? Because Usyk, as we know, has got an unbelievable engine. Um... But I think Daniel knows what he's got to do. He can't go in there and show him any respect. He's got to take the fight to him early and be prepared, you know, to take a few on the way in. To be fair, um, when Usyk boxed Murat Gassiev, who's also a massive, massive puncher, yeah. he hardly landed on Usyk. So we actually haven't seen Usyk get caught with a, with a massive puncher, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. You know, and if we see that on Saturday night, we'll see how he reacts or if he can take the shot. But like you say, he's been in with some big punches, Joshua and Gassiev and, you know, and Bradis and, and, and people like that. Bradis was tagging him, but I yeah. wouldn't say he's concussive Yeah, but, they're, but they're strong guys. But what I'm saying is he sort of dealt with them. He worked them out. He nullified what they'd done. He controlled the space and dictated the pace. Um, so let's see if, uh, if Dubois can do anything different. I know that, you know, there's a very small amount of people that actually think he can pull this off. Um... But it's heavyweight boxing, man. You know, upsets, it's riddled, riddled with upsets. Let's, let's see how he goes. You know, we're all rooting for Daniel Dubois, that's for sure. You know, we want to see him do it, man, because it'll be one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight boxing history. Absolutely would. But listen, if he does nail him, Usyk might have a granite chin. We don't know. So. Yeah, well, let's, let's find out on Saturday night. One thing I can guarantee is the atmosphere in there. We're only a stone throw away from the stadium now, 43,000 people. It's Independence Day tomorrow, yeah. Ukrainian Independence Day. So there's going to be loads of people at the Open Workout, which we're just about to go to. And the atmosphere in there is going to be insane. I've been, I think they've done tickets for like as cheap as £9 out there, so just so that the Ukrainians can come. He's doing it for his people, which is really important. 
really important. I had a good catch up, by the way, as well. That's what I tell you with Nazim Hamid. Oh. Um, yeah, we had a wicked catch up earlier. I was with him for about an hour earlier. Me and Naz go right back to when we were boxing together as amateurs and that. And we were talking about um, Adam Hamid boxing on the bill. Chief support. How's that, mate? Your professional debut. Chief, chief support, professional debut, but really looking forward to seeing him, see how, you know, see how he um, develops as a, as a fighter as well. But Naz was in great spirits, man. It's always good to see Naz around at these fights, and I think we're going to see a lot more of him as well. Hamza Shiraz on this card as well. Yeah, WBC middleweight title, Hamza Shiraz. He's going in against the Ukrainian Olympian, actually, undefeated. Um, a good fight. Another test for Shiraz. Shiraz goes on and wins a world title for me. Really? I, I believe that, yeah. I think he's a great, great fighter. Um, and I think he goes on to win a world title, definitely. That's a great fight on the card as well. Decent card on Saturday. Now, I like Simon Jordan, what he does. But just want to point out something. I watched um, a video yesterday when you were... Uh, in the market square yeah. and he asked about um, a rematch clause for this fight if Daniel were to win yeah. this is a mandatory fight so yeah. obviously there is no, no, no rematch, rematch. Yeah. just to clarify that yeah, that's right, Simon yeah. if you're watching yeah yeah. <laughs> so yeah we did that. I know that I, I saw that actually as well but um, yeah it's going to be a good night mate it's going to be a good night I'm looking forward to it the weather's been wicked here as well 25 degrees here yeah? wow. really nice wow. right talking about Simon Jordan I've just got to this hotel yeah. uh, he's done a piece on Talk Sport about some comments Nigel Ben made regarding you did you see the, did you see that no word? I've li- you, you know I've just got to the I'm, hotel you and I'm Gareth are watching mate, it yeah, yeah, he made you. them on the fight is right to Spencer Fear on yeah um, I'm not exactly sure what he said about you but yeah. it's obviously to do with his son Connor and some comments that you've and Simon have made throughout this whole process yeah. with Connor. So what's happened there with Nigel Ben? Yeah, he weren't obviously happy with us talking about, you know, the situation with Connor Ben, the way it's been handled, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, and he, he was not happy with me, he was not happy with Simon, but I was like, you know what? It is what it is, man. It's all right like saying that, but it's all about, you know, strict liability and Connor proving his innocence and whatever. And we know we've seen all the narratives that have been thrown in out, thrown out. Um and we just talk about it, you know, we're just talking about, you know, we all wanted to see Conor Ben clear his name. He has to clear his name. That's the point. Do you know what I mean? And um, Nigel, There were some references to Amir Khan as well and how you spoke about Yeah, Amir. about the way that we dealt with the Amir Khan situation. And I said, well, listen, what, you know, he's talking about TalkSport having this hate campaign against Conor. It's not like that at all. Not like that at all. TalkSport actually, I said, Conor, come on, explain yourself. Like, come on and have a chat. Nigel Ben, come on, let's have a chat. They don't want to come on. Amir Khan in that situation, Amir Khan was on the phone the next day saying, can I come on Talk Sport, please, so that I can set, put my side across. So that they didn't want to come on. That was, the, that was the reality of it. I don't know, he's pointing at himself, Gav. Yeah, on, what are you yeah. saying? No, Amir came on and did drive me into the Yeah, but he came on in like a couple of hours after the test. No, he, came straight. he was in London. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. Amir was, Amir was in London and he just came straight. I just yeah. jumped in on that. Yeah, yeah. Because so, right. I know that you're having yeah. this back and forth with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Nigel yeah, yeah, yeah Nigel veteran. just saying. It could be a veteran's fight eventually. <laughs> Don't know about that, mate. Don't know about that. But yeah, Nigel was talking about wanting to give me a slap, is what he said. He said, I'll give him a backhander, but the police would get involved. And I'm like, really? Grow up, mate. Do you know what I mean? Wanting to give me a slap. Grow up. Like, do you know what I mean? Just deal with the situation. That's the reality of it, if I'm totally honest. It's all right, do you know what I mean? Blaming everyone else. I never put him, Connor, in this situation. Do you know what I'm saying? He's got to explain how that stuff got in his system. And that's all it is, and that's all we've been talking about. So don't worry about giving me a slap and all that. What's, what's he going on about there? OK, Spencer Oliver, thank you very much for your time here in Rotslov. Um, interrupted twice by Gareth Davis, but yeah. we'll let it Well, slide. listen, you know what Gareth's like. He's got a huge ego, in not he? He wants to jump <laughs> in, mate. And, uh, yeah, look forward to a great week here in Poland. And best of luck to Daniel Dubois. Yeah, said come on, Daniel. We're all rooting for him, mate. That's what we need to do. The Brits need to get behind our fighters, man. This is a huge ta- task, and it could be an historic moment. If Daniel Dubois pulls this off... You know, it's going to go down in history as one of the huge, biggest upsets in heavyweight boxing history. So, come on, Daniel, you can do it, mate. Thank you very much, Spencer Oliver. And that be proof. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot up about it. It uh, must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 